famine, herbicides, there's disease, land shortage, pesticides. How are we supposed to feed 9 billion people? It is suspected that by 2030, 9 billion people will be on our Earth. We will not be able to feed all these mouths. Our country will have a difficult decision to make. Feed every mouth around the world as if it was our own, no pesticides or outdated items, or we can hoard all of the pure, organic, and fresh foods for ourselves. This is another case of America's generosity, possibly hurting its own people. The question is not going to be, are we a hero or our own saviors? But how in this world will we feed everyone else when we don't even have most of the original farmlands that we had when we first came here? Some say the answer to this problem is the use of pesticides. Others say that these pesticides only ravage our bodies and minds, giving us such diseases as cancer. As researcher Judith Stern put it so vividly, genetics loads the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger. Where you stand with this problem is what we intend to discover. We talked to Mr. Sweeney, an agriculture teacher at George Jenkins High School, about the possibility of feeding the world without the use of pesticides. Due to the overwhelming types of pests that we have, it would be almost impossible if we didn't use pesticides in some form. Organic farming, by today's definition, is a phrase used by the USDA that states we do not use certain types of pesticides. There's an extensive list of products that a farmer could use or not use and to be labeled organic, he must adhere to that. And it also includes how he grows the food, how it's processed, how it's uh, packaged up, and so on. Any worry that the food received here will not be the same kind of quality other countries get. If it's possible to export this much food, can we get the same quality to every country? We do export a fair amount in the way of fresh fruit, but it's, it's, a, it's a small number relative to the overall agricultural picture. Many countries rely on the food exported from the United States. What will the effects be if we cannot support every country with the amount of food they need? I worry about them invading each other and, and, and causing great chaos and turmoil and, and war, which leads to more famine and more, and, and more malnourishment because of a lack of resources. Countries that can't feed their own people uh, either have to invade another country or go to war with another country when times are bad to be able to feed their own people. So there are political reasons for helping other countries, but are there any moral reasons? The biggest public health threat in America is obesity. The biggest pu public health threat for the entire continent of Africa is, is malnourishment. Looking for a possible solution to this problem, we found that the University of Florida is studying hydroponics. Dr. Dyer, a professor of agriculture, explained this process to us. What they're doing on these is actually they're adding nutrients um, by hand and then what the, the point of the hydroponics in this particular system is what they're doing is adding water here and as you can see we come up we use uh, reclaimed water uh, the water comes up goes through here comes out through the little tubes into the top pot that's sitting here the excess water from the top pot then overflows and goes in and drains through the system goes into the top one the top one goes into the next one and so forth and as you can see, they overlap each other here so that nothing is lost. Dr. Dyer also told us about the more off-the-wall idea of agriculture in space. Or the real driving force behind what we've done so far in our research in um, being able to grow plants in space has actually been derived from the need to have food to individual, to our astronauts. One of the things I have to do then, because in space, again, the lack of gravity if I spray something on there, it goes everywhere because the gravity is not going to draw it to the plant. 
So I would have to have a different delivery system. You have to be able to have an environment that you can control. And that typically doesn't lend for mass production. It's, it's a specialized production. Scientists quickly found out that plants had to have special traits to produce food in space. In order to find a solution, scientists have been breeding crops for over a decade that grow shorter and closer together for use in space. Apogee and perigee wheat plants produce three times more wheat than top yields from fields, while requiring minimal room to grow. They are only 12 to 18 inches tall when mature, compared to normal wheat that might grow to three feet or higher. In the Space Life Sciences Laboratory at the Kennedy Space Center, plant growth chambers are filled with red and blue checkerboard patterns, lighting systems over the top of plants. In the laboratory, plant growth is regularly measured and compared to plants that grow under traditional lighting systems. By determining if plants have a color preference in their growing stages, the need for white sunlight may no longer be necessary as plant life on Mars can be established with artificial lighting systems. Like Dr. Dyer said though, they're only working to produce food for the astronauts. So with all this talk about feeding the rest of the world, we wondered if anyone was opposed to this idea. The population of the world is increasing almost exponentially. Billions of, of new people are inhabiting our planet every several years. I guess the population of the world is, is up to six billion and probably will be seven billion in the next ten years. We reach a point where our planet will not be able to sustain this species, the human species, beyond a certain level. At some point, the planet can only sustain so many people. Space, hydroponics, pesticides, they're all good suggestions to begin the struggle of fighting hunger, but we're going to need more than a solution. The moral senses needed to help others while giving up some of our own resources are incredible. According to some, the moral and even economic importance of giving to others to save them is great enough to use our resources and our time. Others say that maybe the world cannot take all of the people that we have put on it. Even though, in the end, we as a whole nation will have to decide, it's really up to everyone as individuals to take a stand on what they believe in.